So today's episode of the HX One Tonne Build, gonna get this electric power steering pump fitted to run the rack and pinion conversion. So I've seen this done a few times. I went to a car show, uh, Joe's Diner here in Brisbane, and I've seen a couple of H-series using the electric power steering pump, and I thought that was a pretty cool idea. So apparently it does also work pretty well with the rack and pinions. So the pump that I am using is an Astra style pump. So I ordered this one off eBay. So I will put a link in the show notes for the eBay uh, store where I ordered these from. I think it's a Wreckers that has a heap of them in stock. So yeah, I'll just um, put it in the show notes. So you can see that it just comes with all the hosing and piping and all the mounting brackets to suit the Astra. So there's a pressure line here and then that's a return and it goes from them two ports to here and you've got all this hosing and piping bloody going everywhere just to go to there. I don't really understand why they've got so much hosing and piping but I'm going to piss all that off anyway and I'm going to run braided lines straight to the rack and pinion just to simplify it. So I'll get rid of all this shit and then um, I might try and reuse the mounting bracket once I get it all off and I'll get it sort of sitting up there. I'll just yeah, have a look and see what, I'm gonna, see what I'm gonna do for the mounting brackets. So just to give a bit of an update on some bits and pieces. So I was gonna make this episode shaving off the door handles, but I am waiting on some bits and pieces before I can go on with that. So I'm hoping next episode will be shaving off the door handles. I'm also waiting on the mudguards to arrive from Mr. Mudguard. I did originally order the wrong ones. They have accepted the old ones back and they're gonna replace them with the next size up, but they've got none in stock. So I'm waiting on them before I can continue on with the tray. I've also ordered a, a steering column, a billet one from Billet Works in WA. There is a bit of a lead time with that. So I'm hoping to get that in September. No big deal, that one's obviously uh, working fine still and connected up so I can still steer the car and everything, so no big deal there. Still waiting on the bonnet hinges, um, the billet ones, yeah, no big deal there. Just, yeah, it's been a while for them, but I don't, yeah, really need them at this point in time. And if you noticed in the last episode, I did end up replacing the fuel rail and also this uh, throttle linkage bracket as well. Just with the black, I had the colored ones on there originally and I just, yeah, wanted to go black so I've just replaced them. I think it looks definitely a lot better. I'll probably end up replacing these, uh, these fittings as well with black. I just wanna have sort of all black in the engine bay. So I do have some bits and pieces for sale. So I've got the old fuel rail here, if anyone is interested in that, just to suit a 4150 Holly. Got the throttle bracket as well, if anyone is interested in, in them got a power steering billet bracket as well so this is just to suit the 308 power steering bracket and I've also got a Bosch 044 electric fuel pump as well so this is comes with the fittings um, it's got the check valve and I've also got a mounting bracket as well so if anyone is interested in that so I'll see if I can get that part number up so yeah that's the part number so apparently these are good fuel pumps. They do work with EFI and E85. I was gonna run this, but I ended up going in internal pump in the, uh, in the drop tank. So yeah, all them bits and pieces are for sale. So if you're interested, hit me up, reach out to me. So I've just got that inner guard sitting in there. I've also taped up the chassis just to protect it from pulling the guard in and out so it doesn't scratch. And I've also just roughly marked where I want the reservoir to poke up. So I've pulled all that snot off this pump. So it's a lot more simpler. So what I'm gonna do is have this reservoir poke up through the inner guard just so you can see the oil level and top it up. So I've just sat that pump in there and sticking up through the guard. So I think that's not too bad. If you come underneath, I've just put the wheel on just to check for clearance and there is plenty of clearance from the wheel. So I think that sits in there pretty nicely. So I've just taken the wheel off so you can just see in there a little bit better 
and I think that sits in there pretty nicely. So what I'll do is I'm gonna cut up this old bracket and just use some of these sections for the mounts. And I think what I'm gonna do is weld it directly to the inner guard. So I'll pull this inner guard out and I'll cut this uh, old bracket up and I think that should work out nicely. I still need to make sure that I'll be able to pull the pump out once I do weld them brackets in. So yeah, you wanna be able to yeah, pull the, pull the uh, pump out to change it, so. So I've just pulled the guard out, got it sitting there. I've got the pump propped up exactly where I want to mount it. And I've just cut up these sections here from the old mount. So I'm gonna try and reuse them because I've got them little indents in there. It's strengthened up the bracket. So yeah, there's a lot of strength in them with them indents. So I'm gonna try and reuse them. So I've cut this and bent it up sort of roughly where it's gonna sit. So this will sit in there like so, and I'm gonna weld directly to there. Before I weld that, I'm gonna weld this little piece in there like so, just to strengthen that section up, spread the load a little bit. And then I'm gonna, once that's welded in, I'm gonna weld uh, this piece onto that. So I've just got all them brackets tacked in there, so it's pretty bloody solid. It does have rubber mounts there, so that should take out majority of the vibrations. So I think that should be not too bad. You can just see, yeah, I've welded in some sort of plates there just to strengthen. I've put one of them underneath each bracket just to sort of spread the load a little bit. So yeah, I'll pull this out and I'll weld that in properly. all welded up and I've just put some etch primer over the top. So one thing to note is these brackets have got these little slots in in here. So two of them had the slots, one didn't. I just put an extra slot in here. So that way to get the pump out you just undo the nuts and then you just twist it and then it should just drop out. So that's going to make it a lot easier once this is installed in the car to get the pump out. So that is all bolted in, and that is definitely nice and solid. It's not going anywhere, so I'm happy with how that is. So I need to get some hose and fittings to run these two lines to the pump. So I'm gonna run some braided line, but yeah, I'll have to figure out what fittings to order. And then coming on this side here, so that sits in there nicely, and you can just see that the uh, pressure and return lines are uh, about here, so I'm gonna to have to cut a bit of a hole here just for the hoses to come out and then go to the rack and pinion. With the wiring, I won't bother wiring that up for now until time comes when I wire up the whole car. So for the time being, that is pretty much all done. Happy with how that's turned out. So I've just had this grill arrive and I thought I'd just put it all together to see how it looks. So I think it all looks pretty good. So this grill I ordered off a guy off Facebook uh, who deals with genuine Holden parts. And yeah, this one is a genuine Statesman grill. So I've been looking for one for a while when yeah, he had one of them. And this one's in reasonable condition. Um, it does have a few little repairs that I'll have to do. So just down here, if you can see that, just down here, that little bit's broken off there. And he has given me a replacement sort of piece that I can cut and shut and try and yeah, glue a piece in there. And then down this end, it's sort of cracked from up here uh, down to about here. Um, there's a couple of these top ones that have gone all the way through, and then these ones sort of um, haven't gone all the way through, but that'll need sort of gluing in as well, I think, or um, even sort of them hot stapler uh, for plastic. Uh, I might possibly get one of them and try and sort of staple it to give it a bit of strength. Um, but I was thinking, yeah, gluing it with some of that uh, panel bonding adhesive, the same stuff that I use to glue the 
scoop onto the bonnet. That stuff seems yeah, really, really strong once it dries. So I might try and use that. But if anyone does have any recommendations for any products for repairing grills, then yeah, leave a comment in the comment section. So yeah, all the stainless is nice. Um, there's a little dent there. That's like the only little dent in it. So I might try and repair that. I might try and remove that and try and sort of knock that out a little bit. But yeah, all of it's pretty good. It's all gonna sort of polish up really nicely, I think. So, and then yeah, all this I'm gonna paint. So I'll clean all that up and uh, paint that. I'll probably paint it like a silver or something like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, the yeah, that grill's in pretty good condition and it's a genuine one. So I did have a replacement one that I ordered. So this is just like a reproductive one, it's another cheap sort of China um, made sort of grill. Um, and yeah, apparently they don't fit really well. I haven't actually tried it, but I'm not gonna obviously use it anyway because I wanted a genuine grill. So yeah, I could probably sell this one as well. It looks okay, um, but yeah, just from the back, you can just see that it's just, yeah, cheap. So anyway, um, the light surrounds, they, they're all good. I ordered them ages ago as well. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with the light surrounds. And then yeah, these indicators, they're pretty cheap and nasty. Um, yeah, another sort of Chinese sort of knockoff indicators um they're, they're not too bad but yeah i might try and source some other ones if there's any better quality ones um i might also try and get ones with all clear lenses i just don't yeah, really like that that orange i'll try and get it all clear and then put like an orange bulb in or whatever so but yeah other than that that's all looks pretty good that front end now so it's a bit of a shorter episode this one so as mentioned i am still waiting for parts to continue on with some of the other jobs so I'm hoping, yeah, next episode will be shaving the door handles and I'll get that done and can start smoothing off the rest of the body. Also, if you want to help support the channel, head over to the Shanky Garage merch store. So I've got mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, uh, various products there. So I'll put a link in the show notes below and a card up in this corner here. So you click either or and it'll take you straight to the Shanky Garage merch store. Also hit that subscribe button below. So I am coming up to nearly 4,000 subscribers. So it was only the other day when I hit 3,000 and I'm already nearly up to 4,000. So a big thank you to you guys for helping support the channel and subscribing. Apparently only 30% of you guys are subscribed. So if you haven't already, yeah, help me out and hit the subscribe button below. Also leave a comment if you have any questions on the one ton of build or even just general shed stuff. Yeah, leave a comment. I'm always happy to respond to all the comments. I try and yeah, get to them uh, within a reasonable time frame. It might take me a couple of days to respond, but I will yeah, try and respond to all, all the comments. If you have any negative comments, you can put them in there, but I'm probably just not gonna respond to them. So I guess we'll leave it at that and we'll see you next time on Shanky Garage. Cheers guys. Oh.